Hello. New Natal Sijer is a topic for today's discussion. Seizures are possibly the most important and the common indicator of significant neurologic dysfunction in the neonatal period. Seizure incidence is higher during this period than in any other period of life, and it's, it occurs in 5 to 6 percent in infants with birth weight less than 1.5, and it occurs in 2 to 3 per 1,000 infants weighing between 2.5 to 3.99. So the chance of having neonatal seizure is higher in those who are very low birth weight. The mature brain has many differences from the mature brain that render it more excitable and more likely to develop seizures. These are, first, there is delay in sodium potassium adenosine triphosphate maturation, and the other is delay in the development of inhibitory GABA energic transmission. In fact, GABA in the mature brain has an excitatory function because the chloride gradient is reversed relative to the mature brain with higher concentration of chloride being present intracellularly than extracellularly. This opening of the chloride channel in the mature brain results in depolarizing the cell and then not in hyperpolarizing it. When we see the types of neonatal seizure, there are around five main neonatal seizure types. Those include subtle, clonic, tonic, spasm, and demyoclonic. But the most common type is subtle type of seizure neonatal period. And the, the poorest prognosis is a myoclonic type. Subtle seizures include transient eye deviation, nystagmus, blinking, mousing, abnormal extremity movements like swimming, bicycling, and stepping, and the fluctuations in heart rate, hypertension episodes, and apnea. Clonic seizure can be focal or multifocal. Multifocal clonic seizure are incorporate several body parts and are migratory in nature. The migration follows a non-Jerksonian trend. For example, jerking of the left arm can be associated with jerking of the right arm. This is a non-Jerksonian trend. Generalized clonic seizures that are bilateral, symmetric, and synchronous are uncommon in the neonatal period due to decreased connectivity associated with incomplete myelination at this age. The other type is spasms. Spasms are sudden generalized jerks lasting 1 to 2 seconds that are distinguished from generalized tonic spells by their shorter duration. Tonic seizures can be focal or generalized. Focal tonic seizures include persistent posturing of a limb or posturing of a trunk or neck in an asymmetric way, often with persistent horizontal eye deviation. Generalized tonic seizures are bilateral tonic limb extension or tonic flexion of the upper extremities, often associated with tonic extension of the lower extremity and the trunk. Myoclonic seizures are divided into focal, multifocal, and generalized type. Myoclonic seizures can be distinguished from chronic seizure by the rapidity of the jerks and by their lack of rhythmicity. And to differentiate seizure from jitterness, jitterness can be defined as rapid motor activities such as tremor or shake that can be ended by flexion or holding the limb. So uh, jitterness is induced by stimulation and it can be terminated by uh, restraint, and it is not associated with abnormal eye movement, whereas seizure is characterized by having associated abnormal eye movement, and it is not induced by stimulation, and it, is, it doesn't disappear with restraint. When we see the cause of neonatal seizure, hypoxic schemic encephalopathy, HIE, is the most common cause of neonatal seizures, accounting for 50 to 60% of patients. Vascular events, including intracranial bleeds and ischemic stroke, are the other cause of neonatal seizure. The other is intracranial infections like meningitis, torch infection, HSCV encephalitis, and the like. The other cause of neonatal seizure is brain malformation, which is responsible for 5 to 10 percent of neonatal seizure. And the other is metabolic disturbances such as hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, magnesium abnormality, in electrolytes, organic acids, and the paradoxin deficiency. The other cause of neonatal seizure is drug withdrawal. Seizures can rarely be caused by neonates' passive addiction and then drug withdrawal after birth. Such drugs include narcotic analgesics, sedative hypnotics, and others. And the associated seizure appear during the first three days of life most of the time. Benign neonatal convulsions or fifth day fits are usually happening. Focal motor seizures that start around the fifth day of life. And in this case, interictal EEG shows distinctive pattern called theta point alternant and ictal EEG shows 
multifocal electrographic seizures, and the patients have a good response to medication and a good prognosis. Whereas benign familial neonatal seizures have an onset of 2 to day, 4 days of age, and they usually it disappear around 2 to 15 weeks of age. And the seizure consists of ocular deviation, tonic posturing, chronic jerks, and at the time, motor automatism. And in this case, interictal EEG is usually normal, unlike that of benign neonatal convulsion. Uh, regarding diagnosis, some cases can be correctly diagnosed by simply taking perinatal and postnatal history and performing adequate physical examination. However, we always need Afghar score, especially if the seizure occurs within the first one or two days of life. It is associated with hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. And the random blood sugar is needed. And a lumbar puncture might be indicated in unit with seizure, unless the cause is obviously related to metabolic disorders such as hypoglycemia or hypocalcemia or attributed to structural etiology such as hypoxic ischemic injury or intracranial hemorrhage because meningitis is another cause for neonatal seizure. So regarding investigation, CBC and the CRP uh, to see for signs of sepsis, blood sugar level, serum calcium and the magnesium, serum electrolyte, blood culture and the sensitivity, CSF analysis and uh, cranial ultrasonography if we are suspecting IVH and EEG and also sometimes uh, more higher imaging such as CT and the brain MRI might be needed. Uh, when we see the prognosis, the prognosis of neonatal seizure has improved owing to advancement in obstetric and neonatal intensive care unit and the mortality rates have decreased from 40 to 20 percent. The correlation between EEG and the prognosis is very clear. The underlying etiology of the seizure is the main determinant of the outcome. For example, patients with seizure secondary to hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy have a 50% chance of developing normally, whereas those with seizure caused by primary subarachnoid hemorrhage or hypocalcemia have a much better prognosis. Uh, when we see treatment, a main stage in the therapy of neonatal seizure is the diagnosis and the treatment of the underlying etiology. Hypogly hypoglycemia should be treated. We should have to give 2 ml per kg 10% dextrose and we should have to continue glucose infusion. Hypocalcemia should be treated, meningitis should be treated, drug withdrawal should be treated, and also uh, we should have to address underlying causes. Antiepileptic drugs and as as precautions for observations and for needed interventions are necessary. Always give priority for ABC of life. Oxygenation, check the circulation and consider fluid if the child is in shock or if the child is dehydrated and if the child can't feed. And regarding antiepileptic drug, the first line of treatment for neonatal seizure is phenobarbitone. We should have to give 20 mg per kg loading dose IV over 30 minutes. And we should have to wait for 30 minutes. And if still there is a convulsion, we should have to go for reloading with phenobarbitone 10 mg per kg up to the dose of 40 mg per kg total dose. And if the convulsion persists, we should have to go for phenotain in addition to phenobarb. And we should have to wait additional 40, 30 minutes. And still, if there is seizure, we should have to reload phenotain. And after that, if you con uh, control seizure, we should have to continue maintenance dose of phenotain and the phenobarb 5 mg per kg per day. And still, if there is a seizure after phenobarb and the phenotain, magnesium should be given. If there is hypomagnesemia with 50% magnesium sulfate, 0.2 ml per kg IM. And also, we should have to uh, give pyridoxine if not available. We can also give 1 ml of neurobin, as which has 50 mg of pyridoxine in, the, in 1 ml. So, we should have to treat case by case and we should have to investigate case by case. But the first line of antiepileptic drug neonates is uh, phenobarb. And still, if there is no seizure, we can go for lidocaine and we can also go for palaldehyde. Uh, regarding the duration of those antiepileptic drugs, the duration of therapy is related to the risk of epilepsy and it ranges from 10 to 30 percent and it depends on the individual neurologic examination, etiology of the seizure, and the EEG at the time of discharge from the hospital. Uh, in neonatal period, if neonatal neurologic examination becomes normal and if the seizure stops, we should have to discontinue therapy immediately. And if neonatal neurologic examination is persistently abnormal, we should have to consider uh, doing EEG and we should have to continue phenobarb and reevaluate after one month. After one month, 
if neurological examination has become normal we should have to discontinue fenobarb if neurological examination is persistently abnormal we should have to obtain eeg and if no seizure activity on eeg we should have to discontinue fenobarb so this is a summary about neonatal seizure thank you for watching